This video is sponsored by EasyFlix. So when it comes to church ceremonies, whether that is a small chapel wedding or a Catholic ceremony, oftentimes you will run into some red tape when it comes to the creative side. Most church coordinators will send out a guideline or restriction packet letting you know what is acceptable and what is not. This can oftentimes create some obstacles between you and your end product. So for today's video, I wanna offer some helpful tips that you can use to navigate these ceremonies in a way that allows you to still serve your couple in the best way possible. But before we dive into that, if you are new here, this channel is all about giving you the confidence to lean into a full-time career as a wedding filmmaker. So if you are into that sort of thing, it would mean so much if you consider subscribing. Also, if you are looking to elevate your wedding films and get a more stylized look, I am re-releasing my LUT pack, the Unveiled LUT Collection. It releases today as this video is launching, so if you are interested in picking these up, you can find the link in the description below. Most of the guidelines that you will experience require the photo and video team to refrain from blocking the aisle, and you must have cameras that are locked off, meaning that you can't readjust these cameras or tripods during the ceremony as this would go against most guidelines. So naturally you are banished to the highest room of the tallest tower where you must await your true love's first kiss to break the spell. Sorry, I've just been watching Shrek and that, that seemed fitting. So when it comes to your gear, it's actually gonna be a lot easier to manage than a traditional wedding ceremony since you are limited to where you can be positioned during the church ceremony. So for my usual setup for a church setting, I have two cameras on top of the balcony. One of those cameras is going to be my wide angle. So naturally I would use a 24 millimeter or my 24 to 70. And then the second camera is going to be my telephoto or my close up angle. And this is where I'm gonna be using a 135 or a 70 to 200. It's going to be really important that you have both of these focal lengths for the ceremony as this is the only way you can really capture this moment. And you wanna make sure that you have a nice cutaway shot so that you can bounce around within your story. Getting your groom's reaction is still a must have. So it's gonna be really important that you have a longer focal length for that moment in particular. And then for my third camera, this is going to be my Romer angle. Typically, I would ask the church coordinator if it is possible to sit within the pews as the bride and her dad enter the ceremony. And then once they make it all the way to the top, if I can just exit and go back up to the balcony. Normally this is totally fine. So just make sure that you are communicating and asking before you do this. Because again, if a church has certain restrictions, you don't really want to try to just you know, rebel against those. You wanna to try to go about it as respectful as possible. But if they are more strict and they don't allow you to do this, generally you're just going to have to capture the bride and her dad entering from behind. And this is not really the end of the world though because you can still capture a very sincere and genuine moment between the bride and her dad before she walks down the aisle. And for my Romer camera, I am generally using a 50 millimeter or a 24 to 70. Switching gears to audio. Now church ceremonies can be a bit different than a traditional for a lot of obvious reasons, but especially for the speaking engagements. Not only do you have an officiant, sometimes an assistant officiant, oftentimes you have a lot of family members that are going to be giving a reading of sorts especially if it is a Catholic ceremony, you wanna make sure that you have appropriate mics set up so that you can capture those in the highest quality possible. So generally I would mic the groom, the bride, the officiant, and then a uh, podium of sorts if that is available. And then for a backup solution, check in with your church coordinator and see if you can plug into their sound system. The best way to know who is going to have a speaking engagement during the ceremony is to communicate with the church coordinator or the bride and groom before the wedding. This way you know how many mics to bring and what your options are for the ceremony. So let's say you need a way to share these beautiful films with your couple besides a YouTube link. Something that is on brand, high quality, and creates an emotive experience that your couples will remember. This is where EasyFlix comes in. If you are a photographer and videographer, EasyFlix is the first quality solution for hosting both photos and videos all under one roof, which saves so much time from bouncing around to different platforms. EasyFlix offers a wide range of features such as branding your deliverables, 
mobile and desktop downloads with both the source file and a compressed option, 4K upload support, tracking download activity, email opens and send history, password and pin protection, and embedding entire collections, both photo and video on your website. Currently they have five beautiful templates with more on the way. Their workflow is simple and streamlined to save you so much time. First, name your collection, upload your film or photos, set your options, and send. If you are looking to wow your couples with a simple and easy to use delivery system, check out EasyFlix today. Check out the link below and receive 10% off when you use my code NORTH10 at checkout. So the next talking point is going to be camera movement. This one in particular is twofold. One being the bride's entrance and the second being the bride and groom's exit. While on the balcony, if you have a second shooter, have them capturing the bride entering with a subtle tilt motion with the 24 to 70, following her all the way to the end of the aisle. Meanwhile, with your roamer camera, again, depending on limitations, the main shooter should capture either the front or the back of the bride on the ground level. I love having these shots for a couple different reasons. The first on the balcony capturing the bride entering is really your safety angle. Just in case for whatever reason, if you had to be behind the bride, you couldn't be in front, you have that unique perspective from up above so that you can weave that creative side into your edit. The next angle is going to be your groom reaction with the 70 to 200, and then you are the roamer camera on the ground level capturing the bride entering from the front. These three shots really do help create an immersive experience that puts your viewer into this moment, and is really the best way I have found to navigate these restrictions in a creative way. Being restricted doesn't mean it has to limit the creative process, whether that is by using camera movement, defocus foreground, different lens choices like a tilt shift lens to provide a unique perspective, something that really mixes it up than from what is traditional in your process. As long as you get all the shots you need, lean into this, mix it up to keep it fresh and exciting. And then for the bride and groom's exit, make sure you mimic everything you did in the start of the ceremony for their exit as well and make sure that you follow the bride and groom all the way out of the ceremony to capture those genuine reactions from the bridal party. It can be frustrating having to deal with restrictions and things that interfere with your filmmaking process, but honestly, the best approach is to just be kind and go with the flow. When you are in your sales process and your bride and groom are letting you know that this is going to be a Catholic ceremony, generally they are probably aware that the church will have restrictions for both photo and video but go with the flow and communicate with your bride and groom and let them know that due to these restrictions there may be certain angles that we're not able to capture and that regardless of these restrictions you've done this a million times you are a pro and you know how to navigate these restrictions to get the best shots for your couple's film honestly i will say that most couples are completely aware of these restrictions and really only care about the moment being captured. So whether that is with one camera or two cameras, as long as it is captured in a way that they can look back and remember it, that is ultimately all that matters. So don't stress it and just go with the flow. All right guys, well that is the end of this week's video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you found this video helpful or valuable in some way. If you did, it would mean so much if you consider liking and subscribing and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know if you've experienced church weddings that have a lot of restrictions and that really limit your creative freedom and how you turned it around to create an awesome end product. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys. So until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.